The reading today is from John 1, 1 to 16. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. And the next one is 1 John 1, five. This is the message we had heard from him to declare to you, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. It's the word of the Lord. Well, I'm glad to be here today, and I'm so glad to see so many of you ten this morning. I would say greeting to all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good am I to say in Fiji Bula, where I come from, and we got some Spanish friends here, and we say hola, como esta? We got sastrikal in Punjabi, namaste in, in Hindi, and we all greet everyone. It's colorful to see so many of you here today. Well, I thank the Lord, and my wife is not here, my timekeeper. <laughs> and I thought I'll ask my son today, as one of my son, his name is Amos, He's, he works in the Adelaide airport. I said, my son, I rang him, I said, can you come today? He said, Dad, I'd love to. And he said to me one thing, he said, Dad, I'm not in flesh with you, he's quoting the scripture verse, I'm not in flesh with you, but I'm with you in spirit. But I said, my son, it will be good if you come in flesh. <laughs> he said, I wish I can do that, Dad, but I'm not there. He said, best wishes for you for preaching. And my wife also said, best wishes. Here I am. Well, I thank the Lord. Let's all pray and thank God. Father, in Jesus' name, the only name above all the name. The living name. Every knee will bow one day and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord. Father, as I bring this message of hope, full of life, full of truth, full of grace, and full of glory. You are the only one who sent the only true living light to this world. Father, I bring this message of hope. I pray that this will go in the hearts of many today and listen, and those who will hear the message will be recorded. I pray that they will ponder and receive the living water, the living light in their life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I bring this message, the word of life. Now, it's very interesting what I do. I do Uber. I take people around. 
And I also do NDIS client, I do mentor, I talk to people. And sometimes when there's no one there, I switch on the radio. And in this radio conversation, the radio reporter is talking to a few of the guys who are having a conversation. And they're talking about what is good life. So someone in the conversation, one of the person says, good life is living for a moment. Good life is meditation and healing. The other one says that. And someone said, good life should be a balanced life. A life of looking after the human kingdom, the animal kingdom, the ecosystem, the whole life. It should be a balanced life. Now I want to talk to you today. Let's go into the scripture and look at what is the real life, the full life, the living life, the source of life. I think this will give us the light for the human being for us to understand. Now, the word of life in the Bible, Jesus' disciple, one of the closest, he was one of the last, I believe, John, remaining disciple of Jesus, pointed out to the living light. He was with the light. He saw the light. He touched the light. And he testify about the light. And the scripture I want to point out is from 1 John 1 verse 1. There will be many verses I'm going to pick up from those text messages my sister just shared with you. And this, is, this verse it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have had which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked and hands have touched. This we proclaim the concerning the word of life. 1 John 1 verse 1. Now in this Uber, I met a Uber customer. She was a lecturer. She was going to the Scott College. Lawrence, and and I greeted her, welcome to the Uber. She said, thank you very much. And her name was Yara. And I said, if you don't mind, can you please tell me your background? She said, I'm a Jewish. And I said, wow. I said, what do you think about the life today? What's happening in the, in, you know, what is your belief? He said, I'm a secular Jew. And she pacified me. She said, I'm a communist Jew. I said, wow, that's interesting. I said, so what do you think about life, a balanced life? I asked this question. She said, the man is the center of everything. They got more power today. She said, men shouldn't be the center. They should be a balanced center of the life. And I said, what is this? He said, we need ecosystem. We need not to give power to the man. We need a balanced life. Now, I point out to you, the world of these leaders of this world, whether you believe in humanistic communism or dogmistic, the philosophy of this world, this world will not give you a balanced life. The word of the scripture says, Jesus will give you the balanced life. When you put the God of the universe, the living Christ, in the center of your life, he will give you power and transform your life a shattered darkness of your life into a balanced life. Amen? And Jesus is the one who brought the heavenly kingdom into this earthly place to give us the power and the living hope to transform our life of darkness into the light of life. And that's why John said, I have touched him. I have seen him. My hands have seen him. I have seen the light. I testify to the light of life. This is the source of light. Do you get this? This is the source of life. The world of darkness is coming. You can see the woe. I had yesterday, my wife, we were sitting last night in the sofa and the woe happening. And we can see what's happening in Israel. The Iran is finding the missiles. The message in Sydney, we see it. five people were being stepped to death. What's going on? The darkness is coming. But the good news is the source of light, Jesus, is here. His kingdom have arrived. 
Amen? One side is the darkness. Your darkness can turn into the light. The suffering can be a joy. And Jesus is giving us this hope. John is testifying to us that he is the one who can transform your life. Amen? He is the one who can give light to you. Sometimes we stand far away and wonder, can we touch the life? And if you remember in the gospel when Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas was not there. He couldn't touch him. And the disciples testified. He said, we have seen Jesus. He said, unless I see Jesus and touch him, then I will believe. And when Thomas was there, Jesus appeared. He said, Thomas, come, touch my wounds. Look at the wounds, still fresh. And Jesus turned around and said, Blessed are those who haven't seen me, yet they believe. Thomas, you have seen me, yet do you believe? My friends, today, those who are listening here, and I'm sure this will be recorded, and those will hear online. There is only one hope. Your darkness can turn into the light. And whether you are a Hindu, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a Jew, whether you are Iranian, or whether you are from Pacific nation, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And in, when I was a Hindu, I was reading about a scripture in the Hindu philosophy, Bhagavad Gita. And there is a God of the Hindu, Krishna, pointing out, believe the one who will ta take your sins away and he will give you the grace. And I want to tell you who is the one who can forgive your sin, and this is Jesus Christ. I talked to the Hindus, the Muslim, in Hindu language, it is the power of Jesus. Isu Masi, Jo Jivit Parmeshware. Jo Jagatka Shakti Sali Mahatma hai, wo paap se chama ka sakta hai. He is the only one who incarnated in fully, in flesh. His whole divine attribute, his divine light was seen by his disciple. And Jesus is here in spirit. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And Jesus came down to give us the eternal life. And John testifies that in the scripture, 1 John 1, 12, yet all who did not receive, yet all who did receive him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. How powerful is that? When the source of light appeared to John, and when John touched him, when John saw him, he heard what Jesus said, I have come to give life. As Timothy came in Fiji, we said Timothy, he brought the Holy Communion. He said, what shall I do to inherit the life? The question was asked. And here Jesus said, I am the light. I am the life. I am the truth. And I will give you the full grace. He did not come to give you the element of grace. He did not come to give you some truth. He's full of truth and full of life. And Jesus is giving you the eternal life. No one in the history of the human being can say that. I went to Bali, and in this Bali, I went to a big statue. It's called, because Bali... Balinese are very religious people. There is a big Hindu god called Vishnu. And when I went to this and I went and I read the script, it says that in the holy scriptures that Vishnu can give you a holy water and that will liberate your soul. And I want to tell you today, my friend, wherever you are, wherever you come from, Jesus said, 
I am the living water. I am the light of all mankind. And I will give you the living water that will never dry. You can drink your, in your cup. If you are a Hindu, I say Jesus can fill your cup. If you are a Muslim, you know the deliverer will come. If you are Iranian, there is a Messiah who is coming and waiting. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the race. That's why the prophet Isaiah pointed out the light to Gentiles. He is coming. He is coming. And he is the light to Gentiles. He will turn your darkness into the light. And in the scripture on John 1 verse 4, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. In him was life. And that's why the light of Jesus is shining. His spirit is here. When he left the earth, he said, go into the world and teach and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Behold, I'm with you till end. He will never leave you. And when Jesus went up, he gave the Holy Spirit. The Father sent the Jesus, the Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us. We are never left abundant. We can receive the eternal life because His Spirit is alive. He will never forsake us and He will never leave us. He leads us into eternal life. So this source of light, our Jesus Christ, is the light of all mankind. When He comes in our life, He will turn our life around. He will give us abundant life, a fulfilled fulfilled life. He is the exact re representation of God. He is fully divine. He was fully man. And He is calling us today in your deepest, darkest night when you are alone, when things go wrong in your family. We think that this, by achieving things of this world we can buy houses. But Jesus says, you can do anything in your life. But if you miss the treasure of life, I am the light of the world. Here I am. I'm waiting for you, my son, my daughter. Don't stay in the distance. Touch me. I give you my spirit. I will set you free. I will liberate your soul. Those are looking for your soul to be liberated. Jesus is the answer to you. There is no one in the world can give you light and life. He is the only one who can give you eternal life, powerful life. He is the source of life. Now, as we look at the witnesses of Jesus, I will point you two of the main powerful testimony by John, the disciple. He confirms it. He says, I was with him. And today, my friend, I declare to you the scripture John brought today. The word became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he came to give us life. He will never let you down. Wherever, wherever you are, whatever you are facing, the world is going into darkness. Whatever things you are going through, the healing or the pain, your families, this is where you need Jesus. Because in this place, without Christ, the life is not balanced. We need a balanced life. We need the power of God. We need strength to change us. That's the John the Baptist. In 1 John 15, he cried and saying, This is the one. I spoke about. This is the one who takes the sin of this world. I testify to you. He is the one who will set you free. And Jesus came with full of power, with full of Holy Spirit to give us life. Amen? Amen. And he is the one. In the end, I want to tell you about that not even only the source of life. He's not only going to give you eternal life. I want to tell you, he has offered the full right to access the abundant life. In your life, if you are shattered, imbalanced, you're thinking maybe if I achieve the whole thing of this life. But Jesus said, there are 
temporary. You need my power to balance wherever you are. Why Jesus? Why we need him? Because Bible says we need full of light. We need full of grace. We need full of truth. We need full of glory. And we need full of his reflection in our life. So that every day with him, with spirit, we have a blessing. And we can overcome every areas of our life. In finance, in family, working in our life, sharing the gospel to the neighbors. And we're facing the hardness in the death of our family. There is one hope. There is one life, and he is the light of you. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. He gave us the full right to inherit the privileges, the power, and enter into deeper relationship with God through his only son. God-centered is the best balanced life. Amen. He is the only of for are you ready to be the beacon of the light? Are you ready to shine and arise for Jesus? Are you ready to get the eternal perception? Are you ready to have an eternal communion with the living light of the Lord? Are you ready to be the beacon, the light keeper of Jesus Christ? Amen? Are you ready tonight? I'm asking you today, those who are going to be listening Jesus is the only beacon of your light. I went to McDonald, a small town near Mount Gamia, and there is a light keeper. And I found out that in the olden days there was the lighthouse, and the first man who came from England looked after that place. His name was Benjamin. He was the light keeper. So whenever the ships arrive, he will take care of that area. Now, Jesus is asking us, are you going to be the beacon of the light? Are you going to shine that light? When Jesus comes and knocks at the door of your heart, are you going to open your heart? I'm asking all those who will hear, to my Hindu friends, to all the Muslims, who are living in Devon Park, who are living around, why Jesus? Because he is coming again. That light is coming back to this to deliver us because he is the living light. And that's why we need Jesus in our life. And are we ready to commune? Are we ready to give our life? Are you going to stand and look and think, oh, the whole divine, I need the divine power to reveal but Jesus said, by faith you will be justified. By standing far away, you cannot find Jesus. By, by faith, accepting and let the Jesus come into your life. And that will set you free. Amen. There is no other hope for mankind. So in the end, I want to say that Jesus' way is the balanced life. And he is calling everyone from all the corners of this world to come. Because he was the greatest man who ever lived. The greatest man in the history, Jesus. He had no servant, yet he was called master. He had no degree, but he was called teacher. He had no medicine, but he was called the healer. He had no army, but all the kings feared him. He had on. No battles, yet he conquered the world. He did not live in the castle, yet he ruled the nation. He committed no crime, but they crucified him. He was buried in the tomb, yet he lives today. His kingdom is not of this world. He lives in the lives of people, those who believe. He spoke love, forgiveness, and his words transformed the lives of many. He offered no material of the world, yet he is considered the treasure of our lives. He promises no earthly power, yet in his name the powerless find the strength. Though he left no written words, he left countless pages. In his weakness, we find strength. In his suffering, we find life. He continues to provide redemption 
and forgiveness and eternal life and abundant life. Amen? He is the one and He will be. He's going to come back again. He was in the world. He will be. He is the word of life, the light of mankind, the full source, the full glory, the full light of the nation. Today in the darkness, whether the war, whether the war in your life, the darkness is coming, the families are shattered, you need healing in sickness, I tell you, anywhere, pause for a moment tonight, go and read those two scriptures I have shared from one John in the night tonight because Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Don't sit and wait. He wants to touch you. He wants to set you free. He wants to liberate you. He is the answer of your life. There is no other balance. There is no one will turn away you from the darkness into light. It is Jesus, my Lord. And I bring forth this message of hope. And I hope this light will come in your life. Read the scriptures because Jesus is coming. There is no other in this, any scriptures of the world, whether you read the Quran or whether you read the Ramayana, or you read the, any scriptures, no one coming. It is only the conqueror, the living light, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready for this day to give your life fully to God? God is speaking tonight. I want you to, as the, the worship singers will come today, and share this, what a beautiful name we have. This name will set you free. His power will give you where there is no powerless. He will give you hope where there is no hope. If anyone today wants to give the life, if you have been shattered, Jesus said, come to me. Lay down your life and I will give you rest. I will fill your cup, your dry cup, and I will give you light, abundant life full of glory, full of light, and full of grace. Are you ready to make the decision? Whoever is listening in the broadcast, I challenge you, whether you Hindu or Muslim, don't look at it from there. Come to Jesus. Because you look and wait. This life will fade away. You will die in your sin. Then you say, I wish I have listened to this message of hope. Before it's too late, you don't know what will be tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus is calling you today. And let us all bow down and say, thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, I come before thee. I thank you that you are the beacon, you are the light of our life. Fill everyone today who have come in your name. Where there is darkness the areas where we have not made you Lord and light of our life, teach us, prepare us, mold us, shape us, and those who are in darkness, let your light shine in their life. If they could go through a hard time, financial difficulties, the families has been broken, death has come, loneliness has kicked in, wars is happening, Death is happening. Father, I pray that you bring the light to the grief. Give them the healing. And you are the deliverer who can balance our life, who can give us hope. Here we wait for you, our deliverer. Let your light come in us once again through your spirit and shine and make us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.